Listen. Welcome to the Nintendo Voice Chat episode 437. I'm your host, Zach Ryan. This is IGN's Nintendo Show every Thursday at 3 p.m. at nvc.ign.com and Fridays on YouTube. This week I'm joined by Per Schneider. Good day, my friend. Good day to you, sir. Brian Altano. Hello. And down there on the end, Alex Osborne in his first question mark first. NVC appearance. Alex, why don't you tell us uh, what you do here at IGN? I'm the homepage editor, so... When you see things positioned on the site, stuff up at the top, mm -hmm. and the little blocks on the bottom, I decide where that goes. It's very, very important gig, and uh, I, I will say that you're doing a bang-up job. You've been doing you. it now for, what, four, six, six months? months yeah, yeah, since about oh E3, right? If not even earlier. Yeah. And Alex, like you, you'll recognize Alex's name because you've written for the site for a really yes. long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're a fellow Nintendo nerd. Mm -hmm. um, what's your favorite Nintendo game and or franchise? Uh, Zelda, Majora's Mask specifically. Okay. Oh, that's a good but one. But you're also a Pokemon guy, right? Also a Pokemon guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you're also an anime guy, aren't you? An, an anime guy. Okay, yeah. there we go. Right. Yeah. Well, those are the three. Uh, this year, or this episode, we're not going to be talking about any anime, but we'll probably nope. talk about those other two. Um, we're going to do a whole year in review for you this year. There's a lot of stuff to get through, but I did want to share an anecdote that I just heard about Per Schneider. Huh? Um, Friend of the show, Justin Davis, who's a regular on GameScoop, was telling me that uh, he has a one-on-one, -on -one, a weekly standing one-on-one -on -one with Pear as his manager, where mm -hmm. you guys talk about like what you know Justin's job, et cetera. And uh, Justin said that uh, Pear ended that by telling him, hey, I'm sorry to cut this short, but I have to go to another meeting. Um, I got to get out of here. I have a hard out. And he split. And then Justin said he walked past a room where Pear was just sitting in the room eating cookies. <laughs> what? Yeah. No. True or false? That was uh, false. I had a meeting with book, my... Do you book a weekly personal cookie <laughs> meeting? Is that no. like a German thing? Is a cookie no, meeting like a the, German the thing? People, the people I had to have the budget meeting with were in that room do, judging some cookie competition or mm -hmm. something. So I had to grab them. A likely story. What's it like to like look to your friends directly in the face and lie? <laughs> 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 right. Guys. Those we, cookies were delicious. We have an action-packed show. We have a ton of games to get through um, in 2018 for Nintendo. But I, I did want to start with a, a quick recap of what we're playing this week. Me, personally... I'm only playing Smash. I've been playing Smash like it's going out of business. Um, the only thing that I'll say that I have to add uh, to last week's discussion about Smash is, um, man, that online is wrecked. It is, is it? such a bummer huh. to try and play online. I, I mean, you're talking like single digit frames per second in some cases. And f for someone like me who's trying to get better at the game, it is you're nigh on impossible to try and improve but when you're playing that slowly. You're like, not enjoying sucks. the slow-mo mode? No, it's terrible because like you're slashing your sword at people and then they've already moved and there's no hit detection and like I think it's, a, it baffles me but that there's not dedicated servers for this game and it, it's crazy to me that Nintendo is not fixing this. Welcome to the beta. Because there wasn't yeah. one. There was no there was no public beta right. for a game that has a huge audience playing. Yeah. Well, what's you know, is no that test crazy. fire. We've yeah. kind of come to expect right? this with a lot of Nintendo stuff at this point, but the major difference is this is one of the first tentpole games to come after the fact that they started charging for online. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're paying for access to that slideshow currently. Yeah, it's yeah. funny to think like earlier this year we were thinking they were going to launch Switch Online with Smash, like that right. being mm -hmm. the big thing and making yep. that big push, and it's like... This this yeah. game came in hot, I tell you. I mean, otherwise, they, they've done test fires for all their big online games. Mm -hmm. And they didn't do it for this one. That's a good point. Right? That's a yeah. really good point. They came in hot, and this is now the beta, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for paying for the game. Uh, luckily, there there's a lot more to be had in that game, including four-player and eight-player local, but... It yeah. Would it, uh, it's a bummer. It's it's sad they couldn't get this right. As a dude that that none of my roommates play Smash, and uh, it's it's hard to get a competitive Smash round going here at the office right now because everybody's wrapping up the end of the year stuff. I'm just looking to play against people, and online seems to be my best option, mm. but... It's unfun. I tried for an hour last we'll night. We'll play with just you. Like, just thank you. Come yeah. in. Bring your switch. That. We'll play it. You can take it anywhere. Bring it to that cookie oh. meeting. He yeah, bring it to himself. my cookie meeting. <laughs> the German like, cookie I meeting. Have a, I have a secret cookie meeting every week. <laughs> Don't shine. Yes. Uh, Brian, tell us about Princess Battle Princess Madeline. Uh, Battle Princess Madeline is finally out now on Switch. I believe this week. Uh, I actually got uh, what. I oh, is this like the John Wick of uh, 16 bit platformers? A little bit. No, yeah. this is um, this is a effectively spiritual successor to something like Ghosts and Goblins, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, whatever Ooh. combinations of ghouls and ghosts and goblins and goblins that you can put together. Okay, uh, which was uh, old Capcom games, um, sort of action platformers about fighting uh, evil nightmare monsters. Um, this one was a Kickstarter darling for a while. It's finally out now. I like it. I do not love it. Okay, um, it's got a lot going for it, but I think. It's it's a little too old school for me. Um, it's got two modes. One's like a story driven mode, which is cool. It lets you kind of meander around the world a little bit and upgrade stuff uh, with a shop and like kind of mild RPG elements. 
And there's an arcade mode, which is straight up 16 bit mm -hmm. ghouls and ghosts, ghosts and goblins. Um, it's really gorgeous. The sprite work is fantastic. The music's really good. The animation's awesome. Uh, it just feels a little. A little too old school for me. I think it's a little bit unforgiving, but that's kind of what you go in expecting with a Ghouls and Ghosts style game. Mm -hmm. So maybe you'll enjoy it. So I was okay. going to get it just because it looks like that era of Capcom games. Yeah. It looks like Mickey Mouse or Demon Crest or, you know, like any of the, like even Aladdin, like the the kind of like rounded look of the old Capcom 16-bit games. Yep. And so when I saw it, when I saw it running, I'm like, I'm going to play this. Um I, I think you still I, I wish you'd love it. Yeah. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm I wish that you'd out. love it. I, yeah, like, I wish. It's, it's like in, in the seven-ish territory okay. right now, which is still good. That's still good. It's still good okay. on our scale. That's so. still good. Yeah. It just sounds like it's missing some of maybe the quality of life improvements that A little seen bit, yeah. Over the years. Mm -hmm. The sprite work is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that sort of frantic trailer that we just saw, if you're watching the video version, was pretty impressive mm -hmm. just from a, a sprite work uh, perspective. But yep. I, I'm not a fan of Ghouls and Ghosts or Ghosts and Goblins or Goblins and Ghouls or any of those games, any permutation of those those two monsters um but this game does look worth checking out mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. right on um pair you wanted to talk about the atari flashback classics yeah i'm playing a bunch of stuff i'm playing a lot more sundered i'm playing this uh mars survival game called jcb pioneer mars mm -hmm. which i'm actually digging it's like a slow paced game but this one i've uh, i've been spending the most time in uh it's 150 Atari classics ranging from the arcade games to 2600, 5200. So, you know, the era of video games that I grew up with when I was a kid, um, a young lad. Mm -hmm. uh, now, 150 games in Atari terms means, in this case, I counted it, it's actually 125 unique games because you'll get Missile Command as an arcade version, Missile huh. Command as a 2600 oh, version, okay. Okay. right? Because you're getting our, uh, you're getting some of the duplicates and multiple centipedes. Mm -hmm. It's always comical to play the arcade version and then, uh, uh, switch to the 2600 version and see right. how how like in hindsight how horrible they tra like they translated it to this limited uh, machine mm -hmm. but also how creative they had to be with pulling this off I started playing this too uh, I mean, obviously the quality of the games is up for debate and a oh, lot yeah. of these sort of predated my uh, gaming history but what's the sort of quality of life in terms of like um, uh, like, can you like do save states and all that fun yeah. stuff? Like, all of that stuff is built in. It's a really nice and smart collection with good emulation. You can do Tate mode. You can do vertical okay. for the arcade games that Sweet. were in the vertical format. I saw Jeremy Powers tweeting about that. There's like eight games that work in this. Yep. Is like the yeah, perfect, the arcade. This ones. is like the perfect test case for his uh, flip Tate grip. Yeah. yeah, the flip grip. So yeah. most of the games are 2600, 5200, mm -hmm. and so you know they, they don't have the Atari computers, which yep. I absolutely love. That era of C64 Atari, uh, 400. 800, 600, whatever, uh, afterwards. <laughs> but the uh, the big games on here that are important are like, there's Asteroids on here, there's Tempest on it, um, you know, you've got Centipede, Missile Command, Breakout, the 2600 version, uh, Crystal Castles, and then if you're really into Ready Player One, you can finally play Adventure, huh. Yeah, right? Nice. So you can find the uh, the first e Easter egg ever co created in video games, so mm -hmm. Warren Robinette name uh, yeah. hidden in the, in the walls. Also, if you're really into Ready mm -hmm. Player One, Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on. I'll add, too, uh, that in the last week and a half, um, the G Sega Genesis Classics Collection mm -hmm. launched. Mm -hmm. So we effectively kind of have a virtual console now because there was 50 games in that thing. There's 150 here. So there's classic games on Switch. It's, it's just they're just not all in one spot. The yeah. only bummer with all of these classic collections, and you saw this with the PlayStation Classic, where we're not getting the true classics of the Play PlayStation, like Gran Turismo, right. because of the freaking car licenses, yeah. right? Or the, the wrestling games no longer have the, there's no you know or, WCW or, and all of that. Isn't there an Atari Donkey Kong game that's, that's, that's not it. on there either? So you're not yeah. getting the really bad Atari 2600 Donkey Kong game, which would be great. Just it would be fun to play from because a, it's from so a bad. preservation perspective. Yeah. I totally from a preservation understand that. Perspective. I, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Remember the movie games? E.T. The worst game ever created, so called. Whatever. As a kid, that's all not on here. Oh, as right. a kid whose sweet spot is lies basically in the SNES, like that's the yeah. first generation that I was really into. Mm -hmm. These games have zero appeal for me, and I know it yeah. makes me sound like such a turd to say that, but no, like, I was I've, I've tried so many times to get into these retro collections, and, and it's few and far between the games that really grip me. Like Tempest I really love. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Crystal Yars, Castles I like a lot. Yars Revenge. I've never played, played Yars Revenge, yeah. I don't think. But yeah, this, this kind of collection to me is... Interesting from a preservation perspective, mm -hmm. but like ultimately wasted on me as somebody that like those games are just not inherently fun. I'm me. in the same boat. Yeah. I don't have nostalgia for them, and yeah. they were just before my time. And so when I try to connect with them, it never happens. Right. And I just and I've tried repeatedly... so many times. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, you... I know, like as as a fan of the genre, like I feel like I should 
will myself to play these and be like, oh, now I understand why these are so great. But every time I've mm -hmm. given it a shot, it's like, oh, well, I think it'd be fine. easier if they had like the title games, like you know, you know Space Invaders or Pac Man, yeah. like mm -hmm. even the twenty six hundred oh, yeah, versions no of those. Invaders. Uh, yeah, that's because it's all you know. That's the licensing challenge. But what what you are getting, you're getting kind of like anybody who grew up with these games. It's a nice, it's like a nice you know, dose of nostalgia to replay yeah. these and go like, oh my God, I can't believe how far we've come. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, speaking of how far we've come, let's talk about the year that was. Mm. 2018 for Nintendo. Now, this is a Nintendo podcast. You guys know that? I, yeah, is, I've heard. Yeah. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the year. Uh, overall, I want to talk a little bit about Nintendo's triumphs and, and follies. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk at the end, I'd like, to, I'd like each of us to kind of reflect and give a score uh, on the IGN scale of what we would give award Nintendo for this year. Four stars. Uh, f well, that's not how the scale... What is it? Uh, five and a half Mario hats. Wait, are yeah. we... Are we <laughs> is hats. this... Are we Awarding Nintendo or just the Switch or so just the overall the, the I, I like to think about it as the overall package. Like okay. think about the the, the games, year. the yeah. delays, the the stuff that worked for us, the stuff that didn't work for us. Um, just what I it have, was like being I have a metric here that I'll, I'll get to at the end that okay. sort of averages a lot of the big game scores, um, which will give you a hint of of where the the bigger game scores sort of lie. But Overall, I'd like to talk a little bit about because okay. we didn't score things like um, Nintendo Switch's online service, right. right? Or you can't put a score to like four Mario hats. Okay, thank you. Um, Three so out of four hundred NES. So many games. hats. But first, <laughs> let us take a look back at the year that was 2017. Um, one of the most successful years in Nintendo's history. I don't think anybody here on this panel is going to argue that 2017 didn't just rock our socks as the NBC cast. There was no um, Wii Sports, but well, I mean. I mean, you're probably right. Mm -hmm. uh, first party games, obviously, just uh, bangers. Zelda, Mario Kart, Splatoon 2, Super Mario Odyssey. Um, 15 million units sold from March 3rd, the launch date, to uh, January 31st, 2018, yep. which is crazy because that means that in less than its first year, it outsold the Wii U yeah. uh, in its total right. lifetime, which is absolutely yeah. nuts. That's so great. out of the gate, a wild success for Nintendo. God. Um, and then uh, the, my last stat here is that Switch is also now the fastest selling current gen console now through the 21 months that it's been released uh, and 8.7 uh, million units sold in the US mm -hmm. since launch. The interesting note about that is last year at the end of the year and reported in January um, in the US, Switch was the fastest selling in the history of all consoles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now they've updated it to say it's the fastest selling current gen. Mm -hmm. So we was the one that was the lead before. So I don't I think since it had a slower year this year, they had yeah. to sort of mm -hmm. small narrow Move that the goalposts a little bit. Yeah. 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 That um, makes sense. I think most importantly, it brought Nintendo back into the the cultural zeitgeist, into the conversation again. It revitalized their not saying their handheld brand was dying or anything, mm -hmm. but it gave people at the simultaneously a reason to talk about Nintendo hand handhelds and consoles at the same time. It brought Zelda back in a great new way. It brought mm -hmm. Mario back in a great new way. It was a fantastic year for the company. Yeah, and, it's, and it, it, it really was such a throwback because it was easier to make these games way back when in the Super NES age, right? Like, it wasn't that uncommon to have... Uh, you know, three big Nintendo-owned uh, franchises in the same year, but it's become rarer, but more rare nowadays to have Mario and Zelda released mm -hmm. in the same year. Like, and don't forget... Yeah. Arms, yeah, and oh. arms was there. To, don't tease, Mister. <sighs> you love that game. What's going you on love here? Arms, more like butts. Oh um, okay, <laughs> starting off this year, 2018. I play that too. January, yeah, I would, I would as well. <laughs> uh, January started with a real banger. Uh, Celeste released for uh, uh, Nintendo Switch, not only on Nintendo Switch, but it came out for all consoles. But it was an interesting and indicative uh, sort of look at 2018 to come in that uh, we'd have a lot of really great indie games. Um, we gave Celeste a 10 out of 10. Tom Marks, uh, you know, the guy with the bow tie. You know yep. Yep. Uh, he said that this is the greatest triumph. The greatest triumph of Celeste is that it's the best in class in jumping and dashing. It's blended beautifully with an important and sincere story and an incredible soundtrack. Um, let's talk a little bit about Celeste. Alex, talk you want to talk about, about Celeste? Yeah. The feel of this game is just incredible. The platforming is just so much fun to play. It just feels... Great. A platformer, everything's about the feel, I think. Yeah. Um, and the art style. I love a simplified art style. It just, it really nails that. Very colorful and bright. And the music, it just, it knows its scope. And I think it just delivers on, like, what it wants to do really well. Um, and the story, too. Kind of dealing with anxiety and sort of um, not being too on the nose, but, like, on the nose enough, I guess. Yeah. Everyone can get it. Um, yeah. Really well, good. The, the funny it, writing, too. Yeah. yeah. The way that it, this, that story unfolds is really interesting, yeah. I think, as well. Um, sort of punishing difficulty married with this like very sincere story i yeah mm. 
Also, uh, thumbs re- up for me. Really great accessibility options for people that yes, don't want to yep. deal with the like Absolutely. crushing difficulty of it all mm-hmm. and still want to get through the game and yeah. feel accomplished. I'm not gonna lie, I played that last uh, level on Babby mode. Me too. Put a little such. Babby mode on there. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta do it. Didn't have the patience care. for it. I don't care. <laughs> uh, February saw Bayonetta number one and two coming to the Switch, uh, which is also sort of indicative of things that we'd see uh, <laughs> bigger titles on the Switch this year. Uh, that's re-releases of games that were sort of overlooked or didn't really find a place in the market on the Wii U. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, our review was <coughs> redacted, but uh, right now it's riding at a 90, 90% on Metacritic. Um, we gave are, it Garouk out of 10. Yeah, <laughs> these are this is a pretty great little bundle here, the two of them. And uh, what what more can you say about Bayonetta? It's just like one of the coolest action platformers, that, or not even platformers, but like one of the coolest stylistic action games that you could possibly play. I remember seeing something along the lines of this game outsold the Wii U version in its like first week, mm-hmm. like sales to date, which is huge. Uh, obviously, this was um, a kind of quiet time at the beginning of the year where people were sort of being like, hey, what's next for Nintendo? Uh, and this was it for a little while. So plus lots of indies, of course. Yeah, and this is following the announcement of Bayonetta three, which will eventually come to Switch. Yes. Uh, so th- a nice little uh, welcome uh, mm-hmm. present for people that maybe missed the first two Bayonetta games on Wii U before mm-hmm. you you get into what will undoubtedly be one of the biggest uh, Switch titles. Great to have it back. The Bayonetta yeah. games always remind me of like games that I loved on the Dreamcast. You know, the, yeah. this game does not feel like a Nintendo title. Platinum, Platinum in general yeah. feels like a, a developer that would have had a home yep. on the Dreamcast. Totally. Yeah. I agree. Um, and then finally, we get into March, which is Nintendo's first first party offering, and that is Kirby Star Allies, which is a game that I really enjoyed. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know how, many, how much time you guys spent with, with Kirby. I spent some time playing four player. Okay. But I'm, I mean, my, my feeling was that it's, uh, it, for me, it was a step down from the game, from the Kirby game, game that came before it. Robobot. Uh, in that it, this, this game was almost too easy. Like, especially with four players, it was. Um, it just felt like the game was playing itself mm-hmm. sometimes. Yeah. Uh, but I did. Um, I, I thought it was cute. It was. It was fun, and I think it'd be good for parents with younger kids. Yeah. I, thought no, the, the, I don't mean that in a mean way. It's just. It's a very simple yeah. game that way. I we, thought that the four-player mechanic or the four players controlled by one player mechanic or whatever it is was mm-hmm. sort of like needlessly overcomplicated mm-hmm. while still being incredibly easy. Uh, I just didn't really connect with that gimmick, and yeah. so I didn't get as, uh, a ton of mileage out of this game, which I really wanted to because it's it's. Really gorgeous and it's fun. Yeah. But just dragging those four players around by myself all the time felt stupid. Brendan Enjoy. Brendan Graber reviewed it for us. He gave it an eight point three and he says Kirby Star Allies brings frantic four player fun. That's a continual blast and thanks to countless ally combinations. Uh, one of the things that I really really like about um, Kirby and to a lesser extent the Yoshi games is that their d- difficulty is scalable, right? And that's one of the things that uh, this game does really well that Yoshi's Woolly World did really well before it in that um, you can get through the main campaign and ignore the collectibles and it's a cakewalk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But some of those later challenges, some of the later levels and some of the hidden stuff to, in order to get to that, it's some real like genuine puzzlers happening mm-hmm. there and I puzzler. that's yeah just a little puzzler <laughs> but that's like one of the things that I really love about this game in particular and I agree with you I like Robobot yeah. better I think it's yep. it's Same. a little more clever yep. uh, and a little more challenging but this game was really great and it was nice to see um you know, a sort of second tier Nintendo character make an appearance this early on in the year. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was cool. I, Alex, did you get a chance to play it? I, I played a little bit of it. Um, I gravitated more towards the Kirby games that played a bit more with the art style, like Epic Yarn and even like sort of the clay aesthetic, yeah. where mm-hmm. I feel like Kirby in general is a bit more of like a not like a super detailed character, and I like it when they sort of use it as a as a way to play with the art style. Mm-hmm. I feel like Nintendo's kind of shifted that over to Yoshi now. I don't know if we'll see sort of them go back to a unique art style with Kirby in the future. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, that's true. I guess this was just sort of... Kirby art. Kirby. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't... Yeah. yeah. It didn't have a gimmick in the way that, uh, you know, Yoshi had Woolly mm-hmm. World or this cardboard look that he's got for Craft and right. World. Yep. So, that's interesting. Um, and then... Uh, Speaking then, of cardboard. Yes. Yeah, oh. Excellent segue. Uh, Pear, I would like for you to talk about Nintendo Labo. Uh, this was uh, April of this year. Mm-hmm. We gave Nintendo Labo a 7.6, and our review says, the real appeal of the cardboard toys in the Nintendo Labo variety kit is in its potential to bring out the creative side you didn't know you had. Yeah. Talk this, to us about Labo. This was a, a re-review. Um, Correct. And uh, I, I don't think we re-reviewed um, both of them. but uh, I, So I really enjoyed these kits when we're... Um, 
uh, the creative process of building it and especially building it with others. In this case, my family. We really liked working together. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, construction projects can be menial when you're creating all the keys for the keyboard. It's a lot of work and having like friends along or family along to do that. Uh, it, was, it was a really cool experience. And then, then it became like just about playing with these things and figuring out how Nintendo pulled this off. And that's the most impressive part. Like the actual gameplay you know, isn't isn't there, right? There's not longevity there, even with the steering wheel that came up much later. It's just these small little mini games. But when you open, when you pop the hood on these things, and you realize how they how they pulled off complicated me mechanical functions with little sticky tape and reflective stickers and stuff, it's just really impressive. I, I really love this project. The actual engineering behind it to me is sort of baffling. I think the software is mostly boring yeah. from what I've played. It's it's you know simple. mini games. It's simple mini yeah. games. But uh, I really love the way that they they did the reveal, um, something mm -hmm. totally just wholly unique for Nintendo. And you know they they kind of tease that oh we've got something coming tomorrow that's like mm. no one is expecting comes out four twenty yeah and, yep. uh, <laughs> yeah it was the release date um, yeah so I thought that was really interesting and I didn't spend a ton of time with Labo this year I helped build a couple of kits but um, and I played some of the demos as they were kind of making their way around the office but I think Brian you spent more time building yeah. these kits than any of us I, I had a blast building these kits and I think Perry you kind of nailed it I've, I've built stuff like the Lego Millennium Falcon which effectively has like yeah it's got a bunch of that you built a huge one too yeah um you're doing the same build like 15 times in mm -hmm. a row and it gets a little tedious but with Labo there's funny writing that accompanies in it because your instructions are on screen and there's animations and they're like hey if you want to take a break and like oh this is the best key like when you're building the piano like weird stuff like that so um they're really fun I don't think there's a lot of longevity with the software I think the real joy was was making them um I I was really impressed at their UI design and their instructions yeah. and how they do it. Like, I wish Nintendo ran IKEA, seriously. Mm -hmm. Like, it gets so confounding when you sometimes see these drawings for building a complex, like, wardrobe or something. And these guys did it in, did it so well. And it, it's, it was a joy for me. It just yeah. speaks to Nintendo's strength as, like, a toy maker. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. we always totally. go back to that. And I think one of the coolest things is just every time Nintendo makes new hardware, they... It's it's unique in its own right, but then in the future they apply it in ways that you wouldn't have even expected. Even mm -hmm. with like the three DS as an educational thing in museums, like just things that you'd like wouldn't think of. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. Um so after Labo, uh, getting ready, uh, gearing up for E3, I would say, we looked at a couple more re-releases coming out in May, the first of which, uh, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Uh, we gave that a 9.0. Seth did a re-review for, for the uh, Switch version of that, and he says, Donkey Kong's Tropical Freeze edition of Funky Mode makes it more accessible without reducing the formidable platforming difficulty to a walk in the park. There's still a lot of challenge, and even with the extra help, Donkey's Funky Uncle affords, but the Switch version manages to take just enough of an edge off of a punishing game and let the platforming outshine its difficulty. So there is something that I wanted to say about Donkey Kong's Country's Tropical Freezes. Is that it's too difficult for you and it made you cry. Well, there's that, but um, during in, twice a year we update our top 25 list mm -hmm. and uh, for Nintendo Switch. And this year we omitted or pushed... Tropical Freeze off the list. To number 26. And, yeah, and added something, you know, a number of games onto the list. Um, and the amount of people in the YouTube and IGN comments that were like, I can't believe Tropical Freeze isn't on this list, made me go back and revisit it and... We made a mistake. That game should absolutely be on this list. Because oh, wow, listen to this you. This is one of the most... most punishing, but most rewarding and funniest and, like, most endearing platformers that... I played in a very, very long time. Right. And having not finished it before and having an opportunity to go back and do it again this year, such an awesome game. That's and I don't great. know how much time you all have spent a with lot, it. A lot, yeah. Like, I played yeah. the original yeah. and then didn't get into it much for the reboot. Mm -hmm. Man, yeah. this game rules. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, it's good. It's such a perfect example of uh, a game that... that People might have missed out on mm -hmm. on Wii U, but now have an opportunity to play mm -hmm. this like stellar platformer from a very very talented team um, on a 2018 console. Okay. Yeah, I I'm actually I'm kind of okay with it just missing our top 25. I can completely see the argument for why it's there though. It's an incredibly high quality game for me. Uh, the platforming physics of it. Um, this is I'm somebody who has 100 percent of the first three Donkey Kong Country games. I just don't really like that sort of the motion to it all. Like there's a like a rolling kind of mechanic to the. It's to a the it's way. a momentum that like you have yes. to learn to mm -hmm. counter. Yeah. yeah, and there's a lot of levels that sort of like are borderline auto run these crumbling environments. And yeah, they, it's they, great. It's so yeah. stressful. It, yeah, 
I totally. I, they're roller coasters. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're yeah. roller coasters. And I think if that's what you're looking Sometimes for in a platformer, yeah. yep, mm-hmm. um, then that's great. But I, I prefer other platformers. But mm-hmm. it's a good game. Mm-hmm. Uh, coming out just after that, it was uh, Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition. Uh, 7.5 by Casey DeFridis. She says, Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition is a good quality port of the Wii U game, but outside of much more stable performance and better local co-op, it doesn't add enough new content to make replaying the story mode interesting again. Stop that. Um, Pear's making fun of me. You guys can't see it. But uh, Pear, you're more of a... Is this a Mua game? Mue? What? Muso, Dynasty? Muso. Oh, Muso, Muso, Dynasty Warriors. Dynasty. Yes. Muso, yeah. Muso. Yeah. So uh, I'm not a Muso guy. But I you thought, loved Fire Emblem Warriors. Yeah, but I th- I thought this was gonna suck. And I, the Muso games, I just I have an issue with the repetitiveness mm-hmm. of fighting hordes and hordes of enemies. And like it's fun at first because they go flying through the air. Yeah, but you and you love it's, Zelda. It's like it feels like this. Yeah, but but in Zelda the fighting is a little bit more tactical. Yeah. Like it feels different. Like it feels like your sword is hitting something and there's impact. Yeah, there's there not with, a weight to the mm-hmm. Muso games. It feels mm-hmm. just kind of Muso yeah. is like Sauron in Lord of the Rings just going right. Burr, exactly. just like Ooh. plowing mm-hmm. through yeah. people. And that uh, that does get old, but th- I like this game. I enjoyed mm. this game. Fire Emblem is the better Warriors game. But um, did you get a chance to play nostalgia? Hyrule here. Warriors? I played a little. Uh, it's it was one of those things where it just kind of wears its welcome real quick. Yes. Yeah. And kind get my fill in a couple hours, and I'm done. I mean, it's neat seeing the Zelda characters there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm not a Musou guy either. There's some cool like switch bonuses for mm-hmm. those that didn't play the original edition. You know, there's like I think additional characters and things like that. I think it's a good game. Nice, I think seven. we gave it a 7.5. Mm-hmm. I think that's exactly right. And like depending on how big of a Zelda fan you are, you're motivated to play more and unlock these characters because mm-hmm. there's a lot of cool stuff in mm. it. It's just... I brought this up before. It always feels a little bit like an imposter. Like it, mm. it, yeah. it sounds like Zelda. It looks a little bit like Zelda, but it doesn't feel like it. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, and then coming up next in May was one of my personal favorite games of the year, uh, Yoku's Island Express. What a weird, <laughs> what a weird game. So we gave this game an 8.0. And I just want to read Tom's description because this is such a perfect uh, uh, example of what this is. So Yoku's Island Express is a novel Metroidvania pinball hybrid. <clears throat> A novel Metroidvania pinball hybrid that stands out as something wholly unique. It blends those clashing genres with a beautiful island style and is satisfying flippers and bumpers make uncovering its wide island a ton of fun. Yes, this is a Metroidvania where you play <laughs> as a pinball. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're bouncing off of bumpers and you're like doing loop de loops and getting power ups as a ball. Like this game is freaking weird. Yeah. But and I love it. It's pretty and it sounds yeah. good. Like it's just great soundtrack. Yeah. It's, really funny. And, and it's just a really charming experience. The one thing I wish this game had were more warp points. Yeah. Like me too. when you're on the left side of this map, yeah. it is a Metroidvania. You got to slog all the way yep. to the right and like you have to do skill shots with the bumpers to Every get Every time. There, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so, so that that can be a little draining, but um, overall, it, it's just it's a it's a game I think every Switch owner should play because there's nothing like it really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's no adventure pinball game like this. It's very in strange. Samus, like if you remember that, but like this feels different. Mm-hmm. Did either of you get an opportunity to play much? Yeah, of it? I, I played a lot. I think you guys covered it. Um, yeah. I, I I find that like traversal in this game can be kind of cumbersome, mm-hmm. um, which is sort of holds me back from wanting to explore it more because yeah. after your fifteenth time attempting the same shot to get into one area to keep moving, uh, I just put the controller down. I, I agree. Mm-hmm. I think if pair, uh, I think pair's right that if if there were additional warp points, mm-hmm. this game would be a nine point oh. Like yeah, totally, would be you, totally agree. A, and you unlock ways to get around yeah. faster, but it takes a while to get there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I This game will forever stress me out uh, when I hear the music uh, behind it because yep. I played this game dur- a lot during E3. Oh. So we would finish our live show and I'd go back to the hotel and play a couple hours of mm-hmm. Yoku's Island Express before it was time to go out. And now every time I hear that music, I think I'm late for something <laughs> or that we're missing some assets. But um, <laughs> a fantastic game. Uh, speaking of E3... Uh, either just before or just after we got a, a look at these two games, and that is the first one, Mario Tennis Aces. Yep. Uh, we gave it a 7.5. Our reviewer said, despite some single-player shortcomings, Mario Tennis Aces is still a lot of frantic tennis fun with friends. It's a lot of Fs in there, um, which I... Whatever. It's I don't a like this fantastic faulty player game. Yeah, I'm yeah. not... I was not into Mario Tennis Aces. I like it. I, I tried to be into it. I, like, you know, the first week or so that it was out, I played a lot of it. Um, did, did you play it with friends or just single player? No, I played it with friends. Okay. Yeah, I, I played online a lot, too, and... Uh, I feel like this game has a hard... It has a hard time 
you know, justifying its existence in a year where you have Smash and Mario Party. Right. Right. Yeah. Those are such great multiplayer games, both of them. And so this one felt like it felt like the appetizer for it, mm-hmm. but I mm. I think it's really well well made. It's a it's a good game. No, those Just, of you that are, are big fans of the show uh, will know Tina Amini, our editor in chief right. of games. It's her game of the year. That's right, her number what? one pick, game of the year, Mario Tennis Aces. Right. I, I also Loves think it. it's I think it's telling um, when we see a lot of Wii U ports that we didn't see Ultra Smash ported. They ended oh, up that's releasing because that game was very exactly, bad, yeah. and instead mm-hmm. they ended up just making a new one. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's good. I, th- I yeah. think the biggest disappointment for me about Tennis Aces is that it was Camelot developed and had this like sort of RPG mm-hmm. single player mode that was not great. Uh, we were expecting it to be, or at least I was expecting it to be more like um, Mario Golf uh, on the GBA. Yeah. Because um, that had like a full blown RPG mm. mode in it that was for the story mode that was so cool. But yeah, this they, one was like, meh. It never got that good again. I'm, I'm hoping that they take a little bit more care with the single player. Yeah. And like you know, brought up golf story. Golf story has a more charming take on yeah. you know, like the kind of uh, sports RPG. And I would love to see them and go in that direction again. Yeah, that'd be really cool yeah. too. Uh, Brian, thoughts on Mario Tennis Aces? Um, I think my thoughts are that we are now in June in the list, and I'm not madly in love with a single first party offering that Nintendo had so far. That's this fair. Year. Well, it's a lot mm-hmm. of re-releases. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, but the thing is, if you were to, to mine the Wii U library, I, I think even then, like some of the ones they chose aren't the ones that I, I yeah. you know, like if you were like, where's hey, do you 3D want 3D World? Or, yeah, where's yeah. 3D World? Where's uh, where's Wind Waker? I mean, yeah. I know we're getting um, new Super, Super Mario, Mario Brothers, Brothers U in yeah. just a couple of weeks yeah. now, um, so things will look up, but yeah. yeah well, luckily. Luckily, luckily, that same month they released the Splatoon 2 Octo expansion. That's right. Yeah. So you got to talk to this one because I fell off of Splatoon 2 pretty hard after 2017. But you played a lot of the bam, Octo bam, expansion. Bam, bam, bam. Oh, yeah. yeah it, it was more. It, it was more of the you know kind of charming single player uh, gameplay uh, we, we got with the uh, with the game with mm. with both the first and the second game, um, which. You know, like the original multiplayer mode made you basically kind of like play through all the weapons, and like the highlights were always these ridiculous boss fights. And this one, uh, this this one took it to the next level. I like it was a really, it, it was an it was a very surprising DLC pack to arrive for Splatoon. I didn't think they would go back to single player, and mm-hmm. this came out of nowhere. Had this charming story with Octoling, yeah, and everything. It was good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I really enjoyed the single player mode in Splatoon 2. I yeah. thought it was this really cool you like Mario Mario Paint or sorry, Mario uh, Sunshine successor. Little Mario so, Paint. Yeah, a little yep. bit of Mario Paint in there, yeah. Um so yeah, I, I've actually often thought about going back and playing this expansion. It's yeah. a really it's a really good DLC pack. I kind of feel like it was overlooked a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it came out um, in, in, in June. Well, it was right there. Uh, mm-hmm. It came out uh, right around the time of E3 when it mm-hmm. was only could possibly be overshadowed by our very first look at Smash Ultimate. Yeah. Um, E3 this year, Nintendo leveraged that opportunity to show us so much of Smash. Mm-hmm. Um, following up on a, a top secret reveal that I don't think any of us saw coming. Um, that, so, yeah, I think that, that both of these games are sort of a little overshadowed yeah. because but here's a couple of like online multiplayer games that... You're releasing in light of well, we also have the online multiplayer game mm-hmm. yeah. coming at the end of the year. So if might you have missed been a bit it, of, go back now. Step. Yeah, play it over the Christmas break. Yeah. Yep. Uh, speaking of online multiplayer games, and I promise we won't talk about this for very long because our audience is so sick of hearing about it. But uh, at E3, they did Epic pulled a surprise release of Fortnite on Nintendo Switch. Right. After months of radio silence and saying like no current plans, they finally dropped uh, Fortnite onto the Switch. And uh, the only thing that I really want to say about Fortnite, other than the fact that I really enjoyed playing it for those first couple of months that it was out. Um, hmm. on Switch, uh, it's on nearly half of all Switches. Mm-hmm. So it's free. Yeah, mm-hmm. that install base, top notch. Does yeah. that mean uh, yeah. you have to have multiplayer? Uh, do you have to have a subscription? Well, now it obviously launched when no, no, Nintendo you Online wasn't. You don't need you to. Don't right? need you don't need that. You don't need, that. You don't need the voice that, chat app. Yeah. That like, must have been the yeah. special yeah. deal. Yeah. With they, Epic, worked, right? they worked around the whole. Fortnite deal. Yeah. is the only company that can a work around Nintendo's or Fortnite's Epic, the only yeah. game that can work around Nintendo's um, online service. Yeah. Pay to play, and also uh, force Sony to open up the gates and yep. let them yeah. play cross platform. Mm-hmm. Like only Fortnite has that power. So yep. I love Fortnite. Big, I really, really do. Big I game. Too. 
people who react negatively, it's the same reaction you get with like Minecraft, right? Where or games have popular. been games have been around for a long time, are very popular, and then kind of people are just sick of hearing them because they don't want to play them. Yeah, yeah. And it's like it's just it's a clever. It's mm -hmm. like if Nintendo made a shooter, you know, it's yeah. a very clever shooting concept, and it's great. It'll play keep it. on it'll keep on doing well as long as they keep on cranking out these giant. Yeah, they're updates. incredibly smart yeah. at keeping the yep. interest going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, every Fortnite. Yeah. Uh, speaking of speaking of shooters, right before the end of June, we also got uh, another Bethesda port, Wolfenstein Two, the new Colossus. Oh, Wolfenstein! Uh, yeah, Wolfenstein. <laughs> yeah, we gave uh, we gave the original a nine point one. Uh, it, it released the year before, and uh, this particular version uh, is ranked uh, seventy nine percent on Metacritic. That's a little blurry. Um, yeah, that very well could be. I'm not sure if this is a Switch version. This looks very good Definitely that we're showing. Not. Oh, oh well, just kidding. Maybe. It, um, this is one of my favorite games of 2017. I've not had an opportunity to play it on the Switch. Oh, really? But yeah, it's. Um, I mean, it feels it feels good. It feels yeah. like the uh, same game. It's just it uses dynamic scaling on the resolution, so right. it, it does get a little blurry. But honestly, in the when you're playing uh, play it on a small screen like this, it, mm -hmm. it's it's a pretty looking game. This is really actually fun. this was probably one of my most regretted purchases of really of 2018 <laughs> on, on Nintendo Switch. Wow, yeah. you already um, owned it though, right? What's up? You already owned the the um, yeah, but next I, gen um. And like it's it was regularly dirt cheap on 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 the on the HD consoles, but mm -hmm. this is um this is a game I found like not unplayable, but just like like sort of like perpetually ugly. It's mm -hmm. blurry. Uh, the draw distance is really bad. I don't I don't feel like the shooting mechanics work really well in in, in handheld mode. Um, uh, on docked, it's it's fine, but in handheld mode, it's just it's I think it's it's they asked the question like, can we pull this off? Yeah. And technically they did, but I. I urge you to play this game elsewhere if you have the opportunity. To. Yeah, it, it yeah, doesn't look that, the same. That's for I sure. said that much to a lot of the fan bases' chagrin when it when it had come out originally. But mm -hmm. this is this game, Doom, things like that. Like I'm gonna play them in 4K elsewhere. There, you like, you play this game. Yeah. There are key moments in the story where the character like reads something off a paper or something like that, and yeah. they're they're unreadable on your handheld screen. And so oh. like I, mm. yeah, I mean play it elsewhere if you can. If you see it on sale, then sure play it docked, but. I think that's you're it. underselling it. Like, not not everybody has the. They're overselling it. It's sixty dollars. No, ah. that's okay. <laughs> no, not everybody has a uh, has the other consoles that sure. they can go to. I, I think the the core game is really really good. Yeah, I'm enjoying this. It, it has, sound like it has lots of Germans in it, which is mm. great. <laughs> they're, they're not good Germans. It's, it's like watching. <laughs> oh, you're talking about the bad Germans? <laughs> yes. It's like watching like a like a really big blockbuster Hollywood movie like on an airplane screen. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. So no, that's the only that's, opportunity to yeah. see Infinity War right. or Dunkirk yep. or whatever. Then do it up. No, don't watch Dunkirk. Ah, the this. big two. You gotta get that audio. <laughs> Infinity War <laughs> and Dunkirk together at last. Uh huh. Uh, moving into July. So July saw the release of Octopath Traveler, Yay. which was a long, long-awaited uh, Nintendo Switch game. We saw first saw Octopath Traveler. <clears throat> excuse me. In um, the very first Nintendo Switch tease before it even had a name mm. um and we gave that game a 9.3 octopath travelers this is seth macy our reviewer octopath travelers beautiful style and outstanding take on traditional turn-based combat make it a game that pushes jrpgs forward rather than simply paying homage to the and then i just stopped i didn't finish mm. the rest of that sentence to the up. captain toad yeah I, I didn't i didn't right. apparently I, I forgot to copy the end of that but anyway seth thought this game was very good mm. i I wanted to really love this game and sort of fell off of it early, and I, I have it in the back of my mind that I should go back and finish yeah, it because I'm the same boat. I, I love Bravely Default. Like I think it's one of the best JRPGs in the last decade. Um, I'm a big JRPG guy, but there's something about this game that just didn't didn't hook me right away. It's a JRPG. It takes a commitment, right? I, like you have to level characters, and that in this game, me. multiple I, I, yeah. ones. And I would be fascinated to see the completion stats mm. on this game because I know so many people, including me, who bought it and mm -hmm. jumped in and adored it and uh, really love the art style and the aesthetic and the gameplay and then just left. Yeah. And I don't know what happened, if we all moved on to other games or I if think, it just lost us. I think it's one of those things where the conversation afterwards was all the characters' individual stories are really great, right? Mm -hmm. But there's no unifying sort of overarching thing that really brings them all together. So once mm -hmm. you assemble this team and you have all of these sort of characters that aren't really communicating with each other, there's not really that sort of great overall plot that pushes you. Yeah, that seemed to be the general yeah, right. consensus exactly. as well right. was that like it does all these individual stories pretty well, but weaving them together in a bigger yeah. narrative is too challenging and just doesn't really I think come that's across. Fair. Yeah, yeah. I, I still I I really enjoyed this game. I mm. felt like 
you know, I, I love the idea of the game more than the actual game, too. Like, I agree with you guys. It was just such a wonderful surprise to see a game that, with an art style that you hadn't seen before. Yeah, it's it a really like I hope we see more or something, but like extruded that. in this weird mm. kind of like pop up paper look. I, yeah. I really dug that. But mm -hmm. in, once you started playing, you're like, oh, yeah, this is like, this is a lot. This feels like every JRPG I've played as a sure. kid. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, there's uh, there's something to be said about mm -hmm. like the nostalgia factor there as yep. well. Yep. But, uh, speaking of nostalgia factor, another big uh, July release. One of my favorite releases this year on Nintendo Switch, even though it was a re-release, and that's Captain Toad's Treasure Tracker. Mm -hmm. What a cute little guy, you know? He's he gets out little, there, he's he finds all the puzzle pieces. He should, he should learn how to jump, though. I feel like that's okay. it's time. That would change Toad. everything. Yeah. No, exactly. He can just jump out of the levels. Now, this game came for Switch and 3DS this year. Uh, we gave it a, this this particular version an 8.7. Joey Scrubs over in the UK says, Treasure Tracker still feels close close to unique and gains new life on both of Nintendo's current systems. Switch is very much the better choice, but 3DS is by no means a bad option. Still smart, prettier than ever, and in retrospect, genuinely important as part of Nintendo's modern history. I will argue that the Wii U is still the best place to play this game. That because dual, of the screen? The dual screen mechanic really mm. lends itself well to this game. Uh, it gives you a lot more screen real estate and mm. control options. Um, Switch is still a fantastic place to play it if you haven't. But yeah. it's, it's also an interesting case because I feel like the... Playing this undocked is also the way to play it mm. because of some of the touchscreen stuff that needs yes. to happen. Because playing it docked and trying to aim with your pro controller is right, a little yeah. cumbersome. Oh, but yeah, that's yeah. Right. But by it's the still way, a fantastic port of a really, really great sort of overlooked Nintendo game. And there's a bunch of Odyssey content in there too. Yep, for sure. Probably the prettiest looking 3DS game. You know, oh, if yeah. you played it on the 3DS, it, I mean, they, they did a really nice mm -hmm. job bringing that to that to the to the tiny screen. It I love the really aesthetic good. of this game too, just that storybook feel and flipping through yep. the pages and that stupid bird that keeps kidnapping <laughs> you and know. your friends. Yeah, that bird's that bird's jerk. He's a real jerk, yeah. and it's charming when you finish the first main quest and it turns the page. You're like, yeah. oh, there's more. Or the little like, pixel toads so hidden good. everywhere. Oh, it's that's such so a cute. goddamn yep. adorable game. Yep. Yeah, I good game. Cursed. If you missed it, play I mean, it. You stop, did. Stop <laughs> um, okay, so moving into August, we got uh, another indie darling. Okay, actually, a couple of them. So starting with Dead Cells, uh, we reviewed this. We gave it a 9.5. Nothing else to say about that review. We loved um, it so much, we reviewed it twice. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon Tyrell says Dead Cells is rewarding in its flexibility in a few games, in way few games are. Easily digestible in each run through. It's beautifully detailed and shifting levels and still a feeling of discovery and familiarity. I... Love. Oh my God. Dead Cells. Holy moly, did I play the hell out of Dead what? Cells this and, year. And Switch was such a phenomenal place to play it because you could just pick up and It's almost a do definitive a version for me. I totally agree. Yeah, I played, it on, I played it on Switch and I played it on PlayStation and mm -hmm. I, I much preferred the Switch version. There was the very rare, very like occasional frame hiccup where which you would. They've got, which yeah. they've since patched. Um, but. but this, God, this game in handheld mode, just doing runs while like something on was in the background that you would even pretend to pay attention yeah. to. Yeah. Uh, getting your ass kicked and screaming and throwing your Switch down and picking up and trying it again. I I love this game so much. So difficult and and so rewarding. And for a guy that has gone on the record many times on NVC to talk about how much I dislike procedurally generated levels, yeah. something about this game, the the race to to get to that closing door or the the option to either okay this time I want to do a run where I level up a bunch of my stats and then go to the next area or do I just want to like plow through and get to the the second area fast or do I want to run straight to the boss like all these different I think I think it's because it, it, the way it handles procedurally generated stuff is it has these goalposts that yeah. are always almost around the same areas mm -hmm. and then within all that there's a there's the, kind of the language that it always speaks mm -hmm. and so you will always find the same kind of things just in a different pattern which instead of being frustrated by bad level design, sort of urges you to keep playing because it feels new every single time. Yeah, it's yep. to me, it felt like playing something wholly unique and so retro at the same time. I think it, it's sort of looking at the future of what Metroidvania mm -hmm. games could be. Like, yeah. I really can't say enough about how great Dead Cells yeah, is. Yeah, give it this team, Metroid. I hope not. I like, I you know, the, the roguelike or roguelite um, aspects are ultimately always the parts that I don't like. I love a well-designed Metroid game where, you know, where, yes, I only play the game once, but I get to explore everything and it's always in the same spot. I like right. that uh, style of gameplay better, but this game just, this game was one of those rare titles where I, I did really enjoy it and I wasn't that bothered by the, the remix stuff, but I would love to see this developer um, tackle like a traditional kind of Metroid setups quest game. 
Alex, oh my you God, get a plus yeah. two. So so good. I didn't play Dead Cells because I don't like procedurally generated ah. stuff. But mm -hmm. hearing all of this and how this is like turned so many people around, it's like I have to give it a try. It's, mm -hmm. now, it's I won't good say, chunks I won't say of that levels. It, you know? I won't say that it turned me around. I'm still yeah. not a fan of procedurally generated okay. levels. But this game does it unlike any other procedurally yeah. generated game that yeah. I think I've played before. Um, speaking of great level design... Or maybe not. Uh, I feel like I like this next game more so than a lot of people here in the office. I really like it too. Yeah, uh, but we're talking about The Messenger, yeah. and uh, what a, what a cool throwback. You know, obviously, like, a love letter to Ninja Gaiden um, yeah. has a really awesome, two really awesome retro styles because the hook is that you can switch back and forth between an 8-bit and a 16-bit platformer. Really difficult, but super cool boss fights. We ended up giving this game an 8.0, which I, I probably would have rated it maybe 0.5 higher. Mm -hmm. um, but Mitchell reviewed it, and he said, when you're fully geared up and the messenger is hitting you with brand new stages and challenges that you haven't seen before, the messenger is an amazing must-play experience. Yeah. And I agree. I think that it suffers from the same problem that Yoku did a little bit in that the backtracking is a little bit intense, and the warp system isn't um, isn't as great as it could have been. It's a little long in the tooth yeah. too. Um, I think this game is. It's uh, also super funny. Yeah, it's yeah. really funny. I think this game is like this year's Shovel Knight. Uh, it does for Ninja yeah, Gaiden what perfect. Shovel Knight did for yeah. like I don't know Ducktales or mm. Mega Man Two or that that yeah. whole mix of games. Um, it was really awesome to. Uh, I interviewed the devs on Up at Noon this year, and it's just a small, very passionate team. And then to see them like on you know for the Game Awards winning and stuff like that, it, it's just really cool. Uh, I like this game so much, and the fact that in August we went from Dead Cells to The Messenger was yeah. like honestly one of my favorite months for these uh -huh. on Switch. Yeah, and I, in the same way that I will associate, uh, um, oh God, what was it? Yoku with E3. I'll always think of Cologne with The Messenger because we were playing, mm -hmm. all of us were playing this game mm -hmm. during Gamescom. Um, well, I wasn't you there. didn't make it this year, but yeah, we, we, we were all talking about how much we loved The Messenger during Gamescom, so that was really cool. Yep, yep. Um, Okay, moving on. September. Now, one thing that we probably should talk about, but I don't know that we're like perfectly well equipped, and that's uh, Xenoblade Two, the Torna expansion. Uh, Alex played it, right? Did you? No, I wish. Yeah, I was really hoping <laughs> that we brought you on, and you were going to be like, "Yeah, I love no, Xenoblade." I, I, you know, Xenoblade, like, really, it it's so interesting from a, like an aesthetic perspective and story perspective, but. The super complicated battle mechanics and just it just it's too much for me. All the menus and I just I it, can't do it. Well, they, they do a good job like onboarding though. Mm. I you know give give it give it a shot. Well, mm. And so, supposedly this expansion is like a whole game in and of itself. It's a it, prequel, it, right? Yeah. Mm. It offers yeah. a lot, a lot of stuff for for Xenoblade it, fans. It's a stand. So I, I I played some of it. I didn't I didn't get that far. I'm hoping maybe over the break I, mm -hmm. I can play a little bit more. But it is a. It is a standalone experience. You can play it if you haven't played the other one, but it fleshes out characters that you know from the main quest. I would kill for like a, adds. a babby mode for this game, just mm. like a, just to make it make the battle yeah. platforms like beat em up style, and just let me run through and see the story. Turn and it into an anime, and I'll watch it. Yep, yeah. <laughs> try it. You might like it. <laughs> uh, Okay, and then obviously the big news coming out of September was mm. Nintendo Switch launching uh, Nintendo Switch Online, mm -hmm. uh, which. Still have pretty mixed feelings about. Um, it took me a long time to even cop to the idea of paying twenty dollars for the service itself um, for the year. I, I ultimately, I think it's fine. I mean, it offers some cool things, but you know what? Ultimately, it's 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 not fine though because the the online service is not fine as evidenced by Smash Bros. Well, there's right that, now. yeah. But the I do love the don't call it a virtual console thing. I love yeah. the idea of yeah. getting three new games every month and like for this expanding um, collection that's accessible when you need it. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty pretty good deal for twenty bucks too. It was kind of bad news that they sugar coated in a couple of things that helped it make it a little right. easier to swallow, uh, like. Cloud saves yeah. being there for the first time. Cloud saves yeah. is a good Which, thing. To be fair, should have been there from the jump, but yeah. Yeah. they're here now. Uh, and also getting some new NES games mm -hmm. every month, um, which is really cool. And I don't mind paying for like those those features, like cloud saves. Yes, obviously yeah. NES games is nice. Yeah, I I really like the app that that runs the NES games. I wish you could button map. I wish you could get rid of that font at the bottom and all yeah, that kind yeah. of stuff. Little things like that. Um, but it's here and it's twenty bucks. It's, yeah. it's the, you get to what we, I mean, yeah. we said it a the, bunch during September when we were originally talking about this but you get what you pay for yeah. what we were worried about service. the thing we were worried about about having using having to use an app to communicate with your friends is exactly the achilles yeah. heel of this yeah. service like yeah. it really doesn't make sense you play fortnite with all of all mm -hmm. without any of this stuff and it works just fine yep you just got to ask like how long until until they integrate voice chat into the games properly yeah yeah and yeah. wasn't the online service supposed to come out launch year 
and then yep. it got delayed. Yes. Yeah. So I think even just that delay raised people's maybe expectations a bit well, of too. Course. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. But we got to play sh stuff for free exactly. for a couple of months. Yeah. 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 Who doesn't love Solomon's Key? Almost said. Um, <laughs> Uh, we're going to blow through these next three games. We are running a little short on time here. i got to mm -hmm. tighten up. but um, We talked about them recently yeah. at length. Super Lane. Mario yeah. Party. This is October, obviously. Super Mario Party, we gave it a 7.3. Uh, I really loved Mario Party. I thought this was sort of a, you know, I hate to say it, but a return to form. Mm -hmm. like, I know that's cliche, but I played a lot of Super Mario this Party this This is my favorite in over a decade yeah. in the Mario Party. For sure, party yeah. 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 Um, Dark Souls Remastered. Uh, I was too impatient to wait for the Switch version. I played Dark Souls mm. again on the PlayStation, but you did played it? quite a bit on Switch. I did the same thing that you did, and then I just did it again on Brian Switch. Brian loves Dark Souls. I do. You like I Dark Souls? I don't. Oh, boy. Too hard for me. All right, here we go. Um, and then lastly, um, in October, a game that uh, I swear to God if Smash hadn't come out, this probably would have been my Switch game of the year. Yeah. And that's uh, Diablo through the Eternal Collection. Yep. What a banger of a game. Oh, my God, I, I love, love this, this game. game. Yeah, we gave it a 9.0, totally deserving. It, it There's so much content, and it is such a blast to play, and be it with a pal yep. or, or a solo, like... It's awesome. It's great on this platform too. Yeah, and yeah. it has. It's just everything is smooth. Like it's just it works. Dropping in and out, everything works as it should. You never think about the game systems or the the menus or anything. It's just like you 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 can just do stuff in this yeah. game. It's so well designed. Yeah. I like Plus, it. I got these big metal wings. They look cool, man. Yeah, right? right? You That's carry a flag uh, with you everywhere. So now we're getting into more recent territory stuff that we've talked about more recently on the show here. So. Uh, Alex, you weren't around. You have not yet been on the show, but mm -hmm. we talked at length about Pokemon Let's Go. Uh, we gave the game an 8.3 for great point three. Mm -hmm. What do you think of Pokemon Let's Go as a Pokemon boy? I think it's a great game. Okay. I was Enough said. Great point three. <laughs> great point three. Um, I, it's, it is very much a remake of Yellow, and that's exactly what I wanted, being able to just revisit Kanto and just go through all the gyms and see everything with new visuals. It just, yeah, it, Great. Um, I, I was a little worried with the Go integration uh -huh. that it was going to feel kind of like sort of like a commercial for, you know, people pushing people sure. to the app or whatever, um, or just bringing people to the Switch for whatever. But um, no, it felt it really did feel like a true remake. Yeah. And I'd love to see them do this again with Gen 2, Gen 3. Um, and even some of the stuff they introduced with like seeing Pokemon in the overworld. I'd love to see them carry some of these yeah. things over to the next gen. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, yeah really yeah. pleasantly surprised. And Brian, you've not traditionally been a Pokemon boy, yeah, but now the, you got into the it. the first one I connected with yeah. Yeah. ever. Yeah. And I love it. And I know a lot of hardcore fans are just like, oh, you know, these idiot casuals are here ruining this franchise for us. <laughs> yeah, we are. Get used to it, too, because uh, we're going to wreck everything you love. No, I think this game had some issues with, with controls. Like, mm. I'm still bummed that I couldn't play with a yeah. controller on a TV. That's it's, fair. It's, it's, there's there's no reason. There's no for reason. It. It's, no just, reason. Yeah. it's just classic Nintendo being like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> um, but playing in handheld mode was so much fun. I adore this game. I, it's just beautiful and wonderful, and just I really cherish it. It's such a good time. Yeah, nice. Uh, and then of course in December we had uh, the 2018 version of Breath of the Wild or Super Mario Odyssey in Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. This is a game that that people buy a Switch for. Yeah. Uh, we gave it a 9.4. Uh, we've spent the last two weeks talking <laughs> ad nauseum about how much we love this game, but. It can't be said enough. Uh, Smash Brothers is fantastic. Yep. If you're not playing it, if you're waiting for Christmas, like totally fine. But man, this is the game to play this year for me, and uh, uh, it's my number one pick for for Switch game of the you, year. For you'll sure. be playing World of Light for the next. Oh, oh yes. yeah, oh I'm, yeah. I'm because I'm still my... I'm still working through the uh, classic mode to <laughs> yep. unlock characters. Was it yeah, Zach, you and I were both on the show in the past, sort of being like, oh, I'm me. really excited yeah. for you guys for this game. You know, it's gonna be cool. You know, but for us, like, you know, there's not really a lot to do as a single player guy. Uh, there is so much here to yeah. do. If if you're playing from that perspective, if you're a multiplayer guy, there's tons, tons to do here. Um, I it's, it remains to be seen how much the sort of melee community really gravitates to this one. Or mm -hmm. if it it'll go back to it. melee. Yeah, online being yep. the wonk, the wonky thing here that you know we talked about earlier, obviously. But God, there's so much here, and it's you know this is not really just. And they're talking about this now, but this is not just a love letter to Nintendo anymore. This right. is video games. Yeah, this is a celebration mm. of this medium mm. and the history behind it, and it's just. Weird and stupid and funny and and just rock solid. I so, love this game. So accessible and so fun and so goofy. Yeah. I I can't recommend this game enough. Yep. Um, some other games that we didn't get a chance to talk about on this show uh, this year on the 3DS we had Kirby Battle Royale, Detective Pikachu, Dylan's Dead Heat, Breakers, Yokai Watch Blasters, um, and then re-releases like Luigi's Mansion and WarioWare Gold, which I did spend a lot of time with WarioWare. Yes. It's very good. Mm -hmm. um, we also got uh, Pokemon Quest, Monster Hunter Generations. Sorry, Casey, for not mentioning that. 
The World Ends With You, Final Remix, Warframe, Civ 6, Mega Man 11, Valkyria Chronicles, Chronicles 4, and Dragalia Lost. On mobile. Um, on mobile, yeah. Um, so overall, if you take an average of these scores, uh, we end up around approximately an 8.5, which on the IGN scale means that Nintendo Switch had a great year. Um, I wanted to kind of go round robin here and talk to you guys about what you think you would give the game. Uh, starting with you, Pear, what, what or give the, the Nintendo's year overall? The, the year? I mean, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's, I feel like it was too backloaded, mm -hmm. right? Like, I would give it an 8 and above if, if the love had been spread out a little bit more. If we had gotten a uh, the Pokemon remake maybe in March or April, yeah. but I felt like the big media experiences were all backloaded, and the re-releases we got were all good, but they weren't my favorite, mm -hmm. right? Like, Wind Waker as a re-release on the GameCube was so, uh, mm -hmm. on the Wii U, was just so awesome, yeah. and I wanted something of that caliber, Wish and so I'll, I'll give it a 7.9. 7.9, mm -hmm. almost great, yeah. but mostly good. Um, I'm going to go a little lower. I, I, As much as I love uh, Smash and as much as I love some of the re-releases, they're kind of in my sweet spot, I... I I totally agree with you mm -hmm. that I think that it was too too backloaded. Uh, I'm going to give it a 7.2. I mm -hmm. think without the addition of Smash and without games like Captain Toad's Treasure Tracker, Tracker we would have been looking at like a 6.8 this year. For yeah, okay. really? Even with Smash? Smash is so good. But with, I'm saying, with yeah. Smash, it yeah. elevates that number quite a bit for me yeah. because it is it is so good. It is the kind of thing that you expect from a first-party Nintendo uh, game. So, I uh, yeah, I'm going to say 7.2. Brian? Yeah. I'm, I'm actually right around where you are, Zach. Okay. I came in here thinking I would give it a 9 out of 10 for just the year of Nintendo, mm -hmm. their third parties. Um, obviously, I haven't really calculated in all the indies I played on Switch this year because there's just so many. So, it's so many. Yep. Yeah. And realistically, I, I believe that they, for me personally, did most of the heavy lifting this year, especially through the first six, seven months where we're kind of, it's a lot of like pretty goods. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I'm going to go with a seven. Uh, Smash and Pokemon at the end really brought things up. And there's a bunch of great games that, that kind of sprinkled out throughout the year, a lot mm -hmm. of, you know, you know, Dead Cells, Messenger, and stuff like that. But um, I'm really excited to see what they do next year because we're starting with New Super Mario Brothers. Yep. We're going to get Animal Crossing. Get Yoshi. Maybe Yoshi, maybe Metroid, yep, yep, maybe, yep, who yep. knows. So. I feel like those scores are fair because if you compare it to, like, compare to the PlayStation, right, where in the same year we got we got a God of War, mm. Assassin's Creed Odyssey, yeah. and a Red Dead Redemption. Spider-Man. Right? Like, yeah. And Spider-Man. And then Spider-Man on top of that. Like, you got some some amazing, like, 9 to 10 rating games. And don't sleep on Assassin's Creed. It's really, yeah. really good. Yeah, cool. Assassin's Creed. Right. And, like, compared to that, this this is a little bit, it's all backloaded, and it's we don't have that same kind of variety. Like, in year one, where we had Odyssey and Breath of the Wild. Yeah, I, I would have given I them, like, it, a 9.5. Yeah, yeah, I said it. Al I'm sorry, Alex. We, we yeah. haven't yeah. let you say so your piece. Um, yeah. yeah, so 7.5. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Echoing pretty much everything you guys have said, backloaded. Smash is really the the big one, yeah. right? Yep. And Pokemon is kind of like a stopgap for next year's. This year just feels a little bit like sort of like a weird in between year yeah. stopgap because next year's loaded. We have like so many titles. We've talked about that a lot on this show about how. Nintendo might have like A and B years, mm -hmm. right? Where one year will be amazing and have all these like big releases, yeah. and then the next year might be a little less, you know, a little lighter. I I said this on Scoop this week. Uh, actually, if you're listening, to, if you're not a Game Scoop fan and haven't heard it yet, Damon did a really cool episode where he brought myself, Ryan McCaffrey, and Jonathan Dornbush on the three podcast leads to talk about their respective mm -hmm. years. Um, we sort of unanimously voted that the PS4 kind of won this year, which mm -hmm. is I don't think anybody's going to argue against yeah. that, but. Um, one of the things that I said there was that I wish that they would have held Mario Odyssey for like a February release this uh -huh. year and made that second year, yeah. you know, bolstered right. the first quarter of the second I sure liked it in the first year. Yeah, uh, me but, too. It and, was really but good. But the Switch was, this year was very much kind of like a love letter to families for me. Like they, they have so many good multiplayer games with, you know, including Mario Tennis and, and Mario Party and mm -hmm. Smash and, you know, and, even and you've Kirby got Pokemon and, yeah. and Kirby and then you had Labo. Like I felt mm. like Nintendo was the most family-friendly console, whereas like in, la in the launch year... It was all about hardcore gamers. Yeah. Like the, all these like beloved franchises returning in a big way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, it, it really is. It's an incredible, like the way they've been able to sort of float this year. Yeah. I think there's a lot of concern even going into this year. What are they going to have? Sure. Um, I mean, we even got Mario Kart last year too. It's like yeah. there are three yeah. like, right, biggest yeah. ones. Mm -hmm. um, and arms. Yeah. <laughs> and stop it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Waiting stop for legs that. next year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or butts. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. So, a lot of stuff to look forward to next year. Uh, obviously, we've got a ton of big games coming down the pipeline next year for the Nintendo Switch, and a couple that we uh, think might show up uh, remains to be seen. But we'll obviously be here. Right. We'll obviously be here talking to, talking you through it all year. But uh, on that note, I did want to do a little bit of housekeeping uh, before we sign off for the year. Um, next week, 
no episode. <gasps> uh, time for Christmas, so uh, we'll all be enjoying time with our families and uh, opening presents. You going home or you sticking uh, around? I'm I'm gonna go home for a few days. Brian, you'll probably stick around. I'm yeah? sticking around. That's yeah. uh, San Diego, right? Yeah, no. Uh, I'm oh, from, Modesto, the, Cent- I'm from right. the Central Valley. Uh, watch it. Uh, Alex, you going to be around? I'm hanging here. Okay, yeah. right on. Same. Uh, and Perry, yeah, you're, Stick, you're here as well. So. Um, but I also wanted to point out, uh, next year, I-, I will say it's been a tremendous honor for me to host the Nintendo Voice Chat as a longtime IGN and Nintendo fan. Uh, it's sort of surreal for me to get in the hot seat uh, week after week. Um, but it's also a tremendous responsibility. And uh, starting next year, you're going to see sort of a rotating cast of hosts, be that Pear, Brian, uh, Casey will probably... Casey will probably sub in here. That's why we're subbing him out. Yeah, I can't can't, can't control the microphone. Um, But yeah, I just want to let you guys know um, one of the four of us will probably be in that hot seat every week. um, So don't be alarmed if I'm if I'm not right here because I'll probably be right over there. Mm -hmm. It'll be Pick Cross for sixty minutes, ladies and gentlemen. The Pick Cross retrospective or 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 Brian's Indie Hour. Yeah, yeah. I I look forward to screwed. I look forward to both of those shows. People love the Indie Hour. (laughs) Indie Hour is actually not a bad name. Uh, <laughs> guys, thank you so much for watching uh, Nintendo Voice Chat. That's IGN. It's IGN's Nintendo show every Thursday at 3 p.m. right here on IGN.com and Fridays at 3 p.m. on YouTube. Thank you, Pear. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Alex. What a great year we've had. And guys, tune in next year. Don't forget, this is the only place where you can... Get the thing. Get the thing. Get the thing. Get the thing. I hope yeah. you get many things for Christmas. Get, get lots of things get for Christmas. Get lots of things for yeah. Christmas. Get or whatever your holiday is. Get, get, get the thing. Yeah. Get all the things.